go. Good luck, ladies. Thank you. Bye. Right, we should be about right now. So I'm going to do your uh, three, two, one and live. Hello and welcome to the Legs Matter Lounge today for a short webinar on compression hosiery. My name is Natalie and today I'm joined by Sarah Gardner, one of the Legs Matter Coalition members. She'll introduce herself shortly now. Ah uh, yes, I'm Sarah Gardner. Um, my background is tissue viability. I left the NHS in July after 40 years, um, but I'm a, a trustee for the Tissue Viability Society and a member of the Legs Matter Coalition. I'm delighted to be here this morning. So in my role, I currently work for Medi UK and I'm a clinical trainer. I'm a, a keen wearer and advocate of compression hosiery. And in my previous job as a tissue viability nurse, that's where I really sort of learned to love compression. Um, and I have a little bit of a, of a special place in my heart for compression hosiery, which is a little bit peculiar for most people. Um, I would like to share some of that with you today. Um, a lot of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is try and get people to feel more comfortable in their compression garments. So today we're going to show um, a short pre-recorded video session to just explore some of the common queries and common myths that people wearing compression often, often talk to me about. If there is anything that you hear today that you think you might benefit from, please make sure that you speak to your healthcare professional before you make any changes to your current treatment. And if you have any questions or anything that you're not sure of and you want to ask us, feel free to drop some questions in during the session and we'll do our best to answer them at the end. And we'll play the pre-recorded session now for you. Compression hosiery is often a love it or hate it topic, perhaps the marmite of the lower limb treatment options. Whether you wear compression to manage a swelling, to support varicose veins or to prevent a leg ulcer from reoccurring, I think that one of the most important myths to address first is that compression hosiery is not comfortable but you have to just get used to wearing it. Now that doesn't sound very appealing. But many people issued with compression hosiery are told just that. Now compression hosiery should feel firm and supportive and may take a little getting used to but should never be uncomfortable or painful to wear. Your hosiery should support the veins and the lymphatic systems, meaning that you should be more comfortable in your compression than you are out of it. And if this isn't the case, then maybe your garment just isn't quite right for you. That could be due to the incorrect measuring or fitting, or even the type of fabric selection for your condition. Or perhaps your application technique could use a little tweaking. Try not to be put off at first if your compression isn't quite right. Talk to your healthcare professional about your concerns and they should be able to help you feel more comfortable. So why can't you just buy your own compression? When it comes to buying compression, there are lots of different types. From support socks on the high street to sports compression and flight socks. If you type compression socks into an internet engine search, you could be scrolling for days. Surely if you need compression, one of them would do. But that's not the case. For medical compression. Medical compression stockings are medical devices. They are regulated and independently tested to make sure they meet set standards and provide the compression that you need for your medical condition. That's why it's really important to have your compression selected, measured and fitted by a healthcare professional to make sure they'll be effective at looking after your legs. So try to avoid online shopping or catalogue shopping for your garments. If you're worried about prescription costs for multiple garments, a prepayment certificate might be more cost effective. Or if you wish to purchase extra pairs of your prescribed garments, then check to see if you qualify for a VAT exemption. Is the compression class the most important thing about your hosiery? Well, a lot of the focus around compression hosiery tends to concentrate on the amount of pressure or the level of millimetres of mercury provided by the stocking at the ankle. This is often described by the compression class and can be numbered between one to four. In most cases, the more severe your condition, the higher the level of compression required. But the compression level isn't the only factor that affects the way the hosiery works. The type of compression hosiery fabric used, in particular, the stiffness of the material, also determines the performance of the garment in use. So while the compression level is important, don't get too caught up worrying about the number. 
If you feel your compression level is too difficult to tolerate, a stiffer fabric in a lower class could be just as effective, so try not to worry if a reduction in the compression level is suggested. The beauty of compression stockings is that small changes can be made to the construction method, the pressure levels or the fabric selection to make sure that your compression is correct for you. When it comes to looking after your compression, the list of do's and don'ts can often pile up. The best way to find out how to look after yours is by reading the information supplied in the packet. Everything you need to know should be in there. But in general, there are some top tips to washing and looking after your garments. Firstly, use the washing machine. While most people think that hand washing is best for delicate items, most of the newer modern compression hosiery are perfectly suitable for a gentle wash cycle in the washing machine. And if anything, I advocate machine wash over a hand wash to ensure that you get a thorough clean and reinvigorate the fibres, which allows your garment to be really fresh and effective for when you need to wear it next. Try washing them inside out to aid the removal of any skincare products or dry skin remaining inside and place them in a laundry bag or a pillowcase to prevent from snagging or catching on anything else in your wash. You can buy special detergents for your garments, but any mild laundry solution will do. Just avoid using fabric conditioner and softeners. In some garments, the conditioner can damage the fibres. In many garments, no damage will be caused by fabric conditioner, but the fabric conditioner sits in the fabric and affects the breathability of the garments, which can sometimes make you feel a little bit uncomfortable or even irritate your skin. Just as modern fabrics can be washed, lots can now be tumble dried too. Just always make sure you use a low temperature setting and check your labels. But you can leave your stockings to air dry but never wring them out first and don't leave them out in the sun or on direct heat like radiators because this can stretch and damage the fibres too. Another big topic is when should you wear your compression and how long for? This is possibly such a big topic because the answer often varies widely. Each individual person will have a different need, but in most cases, medical compression stockings should be put on first thing in the morning before you start your day-to-day -day activities and be removed each night before bed. In some cases, your condition may mean that you need to wear your compression overnight, and sometimes a garment just for nighttime can be given. But for those who maybe struggle to reapply or remove their garments often without assistance, don't worry too much either, as hosiery can be left in place for longer periods. If you aren't sure, it's best to make a note to get a personalised advice from your nurse or doctor about the wear time of your own garment. Where possible, I suggest ensuring you change your hosiery at least every three days to aid good hygiene of both your skin and the garment to promote the effectiveness of the elastic properties in your stockings. We often hear that lots of people are told that they should not exercise in their compression garments. If you have an underlying problem in your venous or lymphatic system, it's really important to make sure that you wear your compression when you're moving around and exercise is included. It's really important to exercise to keep your body healthy, which is why it can be frustrating to hear that people report they've been told not to exercise in their compression. Compression wearers should exercise in their compression as doing so increases the effect of the garment. You can even wear your garment in the pool or the sea if you wish. Just make sure that you wash your garment straight away afterwards. After worrying about garment comfort, the next biggest concern for people can often be how am I going to get them on and off? I wish I had a simple magic solution for you here. But until someone invents some spray on hosiery, donning and doffing of your garments may require a little bit of thought, planning or effort on your part. There are some things worth considering that might help you. Think about the time of day you apply your hosiery and where you do it. While first thing in the morning is ideal, maybe your bedroom isn't the best place. If you're tight on space or your bed's quite high, perhaps take your socks downstairs with you to a more suitable chair or sit on the bottom step. It might make it a lot easier. Try not to rush. Unlike everyday socks, compression will need a little bit more time. Help to allocate some time by rejigging your morning routine. Or if you're really pushed to do it all, try changing your left sock one day and your right sock the next. While wearing socks is something that we've all done since childhood, compression socks are a little bit different. So don't be afraid to ask for help or extra guidance. 
perhaps an application aid might help you. Ultimately, practice makes perfect. Don't be too hard on yourself or get disheartened if you find it tricky at first. If you find it hard to get your socks on, the first instinct is often to think a lighter or softer sock will make it so much easier. Well, that isn't always the case. Having a stiffer, more rigid item can often make it so much easier. Think of it like sliding your leg into a rigid welly boot or a skinny pair of jeans, opposed to trying on a pair of cotton tights. Often, having something stiffer to pull against makes application a lot easier. In cases where lighter compression is the solution, consider laying up the garments on top of each other to build up the compression level and stiffness. Another big myth is that medical compression available on prescription is unflattering and boring or very limited in choice. For a long time, people have associated medical compression hosiery with an American tan, ugly, horrible garment that you would rather hide away. While lots has changed in medical compression, and new knitting technologies and fabric improvements mean that medical compression, even on prescription, can come in a wide variety of variants, colours, fabrics and even patterns. So whether you want a sock that closer discreetly matches your own skin tone or is vibrant and bright, obtaining your garment via prescription won't stop you from finding something that you want to wear. Now the use of medical compression is most often a long-term management, meaning that at some point you'll need replacement stockings. Depending on the type of stocking that you wear, you'll need new ones every three to six months. The compression provided in the stocking is guaranteed by the manufacturer as long as your garments are cared for correctly and remain undamaged. So if you notice any snags, ladders or holes in them, then you'll need to get them replaced much sooner as this can reduce the effectiveness. Try using rubber gloves when you put them on to prevent damaging the delicate fabric or keep your nails short and your jewellery off until your garments are on. Remeasuring your legs each time you get new stockings would be best practice. However, if your current garments fit you well and support your legs, your healthcare professional may only wish to remeasure you every six to 12 months. Each time you get a new prescription, make a note of when you'll need new ones. It might be worth adding a note to your diary to contact your prescriber a few weeks beforehand to make sure that you've got enough time to get your supply issued. Even if your garments look fine, it's important to discard them once you have new ones, as the compression quality can no longer be guaranteed. So resist the urge to keep stockpiling your old ones because they look fine. And finally, be a part of the process. Your involvement in your compression is hugely important you are the one that has to wear your hosiery every day. Ensure that you understand the role that the compression plays in helping your condition and never be afraid to ask questions or raise concerns. Your clinician will be guided by your concerns, your past experiences and views on compression, but keep in mind that the clinical aspect of your condition may be the ultimate deciding factor in your treatment. Remember, the goal of wearing your compression should be to help you feel better. quite a lot of information in um, in just a short video but try to hopefully key uh, get the key aspects of, of what troubles people most um, I don't know if there's any questions come through yes so. there's a there's a question um, from Elizabeth who says that she's got a patient who refuses point blank to wear stockings um, she's trying to get her used to them by using double layer of tubi grip um, which she believe gives up to 20 millimetres of mercury of pressure. Any ideas? I don't know if you want to start with that, Natalie, or you want... Yeah, I do. I think sometimes um, when we have people that refuse a certain treatment, there's normally a reason for that. So firstly, I would probably say maybe schedule some time to sit down and have a conversation about what's made her feel like she can't refuse, she wants to refuse the compression. I think understanding perhaps if someone's had a negative experience with compression that's maybe caused them some pain or discomfort, then they're not going to be willing to, to try that all over again without having a, a conversation first. So first thing is find out what it is about it. Is it that it was uncomfortable? Was it digging in? Was it the wrong type of fabric? Perhaps if it rolled down or dug in, sometimes people have really negative experiences with the wrong kind of garment. 
So perhaps she needs to explain that there's more than just one thing. So if you've had a bad experience with one type of stocking, perhaps you need to try something different. Um, or perhaps it's uh, application, or perhaps it's an aesthetic. There's so many reasons why people don't want to be part of the compression. So as a healthcare professional, it's really exciting to be the change agent, find out what's wrong, come on a journey together, and sort of maybe look for a different solution as a partnership with your patient, rather than saying, well, this is what I need you to do. And if you don't do it, I don't have any other, other things. So maybe explore the problems and try and find the solutions together. Um, Yes, I mean, I, I, I would support all of, all of what you said there. Um, I, I do think that um, it's it's important to explore why. Um, I'm a great believer in, in using sort of a motivational interviewing sort of technique when I'm working with patients um, because it's really about their getting to them to the point of change, isn't it? Or that readiness to change um, and having an understanding of their condition. So I think if this patient of yours has been in bandaging and I'm not sure if they've had a leg ulcer previously there's a sometimes there's an assumption that once you've healed them that's it you've healed them you've cured them of their problem and um, we started to use terminology such as people are in um I do apologize my phone's ringing um do you want to take over Natalie and I'll just mute myself a sec um, I think it's, I don't know where we were going, Sarah, but I think it is important that you perhaps explore different ways with patients so they understand why they need to wear their compression um, and make sure that they then can link that need with then maybe being a little bit more motivated to do something um, a little bit differently. Um, so I think that's quite important, but definitely having a conversation, really being open and trying to find out the reasons why the, um, the, the patient doesn't want to wear their compression before maybe offering some different solutions that maybe overcome some of their concerns. Yeah, apologies for that. Couldn't get my phone to stop ringing. Um, yeah, so so um, the, the, the motivational interviewing side of things is it's, yes, understanding that condition. I'm sure that's what you were just saying there. Um, but yes, yeah, saying that people are in, in remission not rather than you've cured them. Um, I, I, think, I think it's a good point around people having bad experiences. Um, I think that's a big player in why people are reluctant to go into hosiery, Natalie. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's because obviously the clinician has not um, uh, prescribed the correct hosiery for, for people, uh, particularly if people have had a history of swelling or they've got current swelling and maybe they put them into a garment where the um, it, the fabric isn't stiff enough it's not holding that fluid back and then you're going to get digging in aren't you and that gives people a bad experience and they think that all hosiery is going to be like that then so I, I think it's understanding their condition why they need the hosiery and then making sure that you've prescribed the correct um, hosiery for their needs really I think it's really important I think the first slide um, that in the in the video session was about being comfortable and there is compression hosiery should be comfortable and if you've had a bad experience and you and you haven't felt that then it's probably just that you haven't found the right one and the the good news is that there are so many different types of fabrics and different stiffness different classes different variants but actually sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming for the prescriber and for the and for the um, patient so it's um it's about understanding what tools you have and how best to use them so that you can absolutely yeah there's a question here from Lisa. Um, the past few stockings I've had um, keep rolling at the top and making it dig in. Should I change anything? Um, I'm not quite sure, Lisa, whether you're talking about sort of thigh length or below knee. Um, but um, I would say that it's around making sure that you've been measured correctly. And why are they digging in? Sometimes if you've, had, if you've got below knee hosiery, but you've got some swelling, above or the knee is swollen a lot of people have had knee surgery in the past which causes swelling of their knees so if you only take hosiery up to the knee you get this sort of swelling over the top and that can cause it to roll or to dig in so if that's the case maybe you need to talk to your healthcare professional about having a garment that takes it up to the thigh if it's thigh length and rolling down again we need to look at um have you been measured correctly for that? And sometimes the, well, the garments you will find will have different thicknesses of, of the, the, the band around the top, the gripper, if you see what I mean. Uh, and maybe um, you need to explore that. Do you need to add anything to that, Natalie? 
Um, normally with, with rolling, sometimes it is about the stiffness of the fabric. So if something's too soft, it will start to roll down. So it might be that you have maybe worth exploring a different type of fabric. Um, and the other thing with rolling, whether it be thylenth or baloney, sometimes it's about positioning. So you need to make sure that if it's a baloney, you, the top of your stocking sits two fingers from the back of the, the crease of your knee. And the same thing with your thylenth, that it's not coming up too high. We have a tendency sometimes to pull things up right into a, a joint or a crease, just because it feels naturally where we might wear sort of, I don't know, knee high socks from school. But you have to have that two fingers width difference just to stop it from always rolling down every time you move. So it might be fabric, it might be measuring, or it might be um, actual garment placement. So there's lots of things that could, so it might be worth wearing your garment, going back to see your clinician and sort of telling them and showing them exactly what's, what's happening. Yeah, and I do think from my experience is that, you know, the majority of hosiery that we used to prescribe uh, came sort of what we say off the shelf. So we would measure you up and you would fit into a category, small, medium, large, extra large, and that's what would be prescribed. And it would be fine for your needs. But I did find that there was some variation on the length, um, even though a lot of the companies do give you flexibility of a standard length or a long length. Um, but th I did think there was variation sometimes on a standard. It was slightly higher than or longer than maybe another company's hosiery. So, you know, it's really important that we, we give people choice here. And I know that some, some services are tied to formularies, but this is about finding the right garment for you. If it's not right for you, you won't wear it or our patients won't wear it. And then we're, we're faced with problems with, un, you know, recurrence of ulceration, et cetera. So if it's not right, you've got to be talking to your healthcare professional and ask them, are there alternative products that I can look at that might suit my limb shape or limb length um, better? Um, Natalie, we've had a, um, a, a message here from a question here from a, a gentleman and he finds compression hosiery too feminine and it just doesn't feel right. Any thoughts on that? I think that's a key thing to sort of make a point of. We talk about medical compression hosiery. I think hosiery in itself is a very feminine term. So if you're talking to people, especially gentlemen, then compression hosiery socks are absolutely the same describing word, but just using it slightly different. So maybe change your terminology. But there are garments that are more feminine, but there are also some that are designed especially for men. So again, it's about having, having that whole resource kit of what's available for you and making sure that you are selecting things that people perhaps want to wear. So there are the good news is there are designs just for men um, and they are sort of like there are more feminine ones so if you're looking at perhaps a thigh length garment and the one that you pick comes with a lacy top band that's probably maybe not going to be suitable for the majority of your male sort of, um, sort of wearers so it's just, just about making sure that you're you're aware of your options and just be be mindful of your terminology so if we're talking to people about going into stockings and hosiery actually for a lot of male wearers that doesn't make me feel very comfortable that actually makes me not want to wear them so we can call them compression garments we can call them compression socks just make sure that you mix your or you're maybe aware of of the kind of language that you're using when you're talking to people about the different garments mm. garments Seems to be my word of choice because it kind of encaptures everything. I I, th I think there's been a lot of sessions through this week, Natalie, where we've talked all about the importance of terminology. You know what how how we're talking about something, and I think that is really key. Um, I you know I used to talk about compression socks for gentlemen, um, and there are a lot of products out there that look like a sock. It's a rib sock, for example. Um, and of course, ensuring that when you have thigh length garments, there are some with nice lacy tops, but the, there are many that with a standard, you know, uh, top to it, um, which would suit a, a man who's got a, a thigh length sort of problem, maybe swelling up to their thigh. So it is there is there are products out there. So, um, yeah, just talk to your healthcare professional about about what is what is available and what you can access. I think that's really but that's a really good question. Thanks for that. Um, any more questions, people, please, please do do post them in. And um, I was I was quite fascinated about the comment, Natalie, about um, you shouldn't be exercising with your compression hosiery on. I'd never heard that um, mentioned, interestingly, because to me, it goes without saying that that actually would enhance the that venous return, you know, that that calf pump action. So if you've got your hosiery on and you're exercising, that would sort of double whammy really isn't it in terms of how that will promote that 
flow back up the the, the veins um, to get around the body. So um, yes, that was uh, I, I, that that came as a surprise to me, really. Something we hear quite often, I think, more in the perhaps in the lymphedema than it is in the venous disease. And I think maybe because of that association with the calf muscle pump and the compression, that we always think about venous patients. We tell them that they it's more important and it's more effective if they wear their compression when they're moving around. But sometimes when you're looking at sort of like long term management of a swelling people get told no take your garments off I don't really I've never been given the reason why they don't get an explanation so I think if you wear a garment that would be the big take-home message would be if you get told something and you don't think it's right or you're not quite sure ask why um, I, I learn something new every day and I think that we can always keep learning don't don't be afraid to ask a question mm -hmm. to your healthcare professional or your prescriber or your pharmacist always ask the questions of but well, I don't understand why I need to do that and then if they don't either then you could perhaps look at it together and maybe find out if it's um if it's correct or not but there are lots of things I think people are frightened to do in their garments as well which is quite quite difficult Kind of uh, we've, we've had a, a comment about that here from Lisa saying she has lymphedema and has recently started jogging and it has really helped. So absolutely. Um, I mean, exercise just generally for our general health, but certainly, you know, for people who've got uh, problems with lymphedema or, or venous disease. But also there was a fascinating um, uh, session earlier in the week uh, with a vascular surgeon around the importance of exercise in managing some people with arterial disease, um, people who have sort of a pain in their calves because of their artery problems. Actually, you know, doing the exercise does enhance that and allows the blood to flow better. So yes, it's um, exercise is really important, isn't it? Generally, um, I, I, you know, just going back to um, the the point that was being made around the difficulties of applying hosiery it, it comes up all the time doesn't it really oh I couldn't possibly put them on or but from my experience working along maybe alongside community nursing teams there seems to be sometimes they sow that seed us as healthcare professionals automatically assume that people aren't going to be able to get their hosiery on. So, you know, what are we going to do? What's the point? Because they're not going to be able to. They're, they're quite elderly. They're quite frail. They've got a big tummy. They won't be able to get to their to their toes, for example. So I think, I think as healthcare professionals, we have a responsibility to actually promote hosiery right from the outset as a really positive thing and to encourage patients that it, there might, it might be tricky, but we'll find a solution for you to get those that hosiery or that garment on do you, do you come across that think, a bit yeah I think we do a lot of we I train a lot of healthcare professionals as part of my day-to-day -day job and a lot of what we talk about isn't the magic we haven't got a magic trick I can't get them on super easy but actually the way that we talk about them and associate compression hosiery sometimes we are the beginning of the problem so people will say things like oh I don't think you're going to manage but here's this and I'm and, it, and it's almost setting that seed like so I I love compression hosiery I know it's not easy and it sometimes can be a challenge but I think sometimes when I get so excited about it and, and speak with such passion actually people People get excited about it too so I think every healthcare professional needs to maybe change their mindset about compression maybe rethink the way that they not sell it so much but maybe talk to their patients about it. it should be supportive it is like a big hug for your leg it will make you feel better it's going to be a bit tricky at first so let's work out together what's the best way to get it on let me and I think sometimes we don't dedicate enough time for that part so we kind of rush through this there's your sock and off you go out the door I'll see you in six months so I think if we say here it is I'm going to show you how to put it on now you show me how you're going to put it on perhaps we need to tweak some bits perhaps we might need a little bit of a assistance with an aid bring someone back make sure they've been fine after sort of like a week or 10 days is there any problems if they are work through them together having someone say well I can't get it on is very different from watching somebody struggle at a certain part and saying well I think if you sat in a lower chair you might find it easier or perhaps somebody that might struggle with getting it back off again I think if you if you if you hear someone say I can't, I can't do it that doesn't give you enough information let's let me find out what bit you can't do let's see what we can do and it is about making it making it a little bit more positive um, and I think if that comes from us people will pick up that they'll feel more positive and they'll be more willing to sort of give it a little bit more of a go so I do think we need to change everything about the way we think about compression because if you're in the right garment and you wear it you will feel so much better I'm 100% positive so I think if we all felt like that 
our patients would do too. So I, I think it's really yeah, I, I agree. And I know that um, in some areas of the UK, they actually have services or teams to enable people to adjust to changes in their life, for example. So I'm not just talking here about hosiery, but it's about enabling self-care and independence. Um, and Kate from one of the coalition members was talking about the service they have in Leeds. Uh, and that team actually goes out and works really closely with patients with um, to, to, to enable them to be able to self-care with hosiery garments. So they have all different gadgets and different applicators because sh there should be one that works for that individual. And they work very closely with family members as well because sometimes, you know, we, we've got to admit there are some people that will not be able to get their hosiery on, but it doesn't mean that they, they can't wear it. So we need to look at who else is available to do that. Uh, and family members, you know, often, they are very willing to do that but they have to be shown and you're right it takes a bit of time um you need several visits to go back support visits you know until it's right absolutely I think know that it's going to be tricky when they find it tricky they're not surprised so don't say it's going to be really difficult and you're not going to manage but say i think you're going to need a little bit of a practice so don't be worried if you don't get it right first time the amount absolutely. of times they go oh i couldn't get that on and it's been sat on the floor ever since so definitely expectation management is really important I think yeah. that's all we have time for. Yes, now. absolutely. Gosh, it's just been a oh, great conversation. <laughs> I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. I um, hope everyone else out there has some very positive comments on the chat. So thank you for that. And um, get out there, promote hosiery, wear it yourself, encourage everyone else because it's the way to go. Definitely. Thank you, Sarah. All right, then. Thank you. Bye-bye.